Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements how-to, we'll be making this baseball card style mini poster. Now it's at the default Photoshop Elements size in the portrait mode as opposed to the horizontal or landscape mode. And it's great for things like Little League as you can see in here. Now I'm doing this at some just generic coloration in here. If you want to, though, you can match these colors to the uniform colors. I'll show that in a final step at the end of this, how you can quickly match those colors. Okay, let's see how we can make this baseball card style mini poster. Let's just get that out of the way. And we'll start off with a brand new file here, new blank file. Now, I have this starting off with the default Photoshop elements size set at resolution of 300 so it's at a printing resolution and then simply reverse these two numbers here make your width 4 and your height 6 there we go so there's our basic setup now to make this work we're going to be using some very specific settings in here to get our poster size exactly right because we have you know those thin lines going on the outside edges it needs to be precisely measured and we'll be doing that with guidelines I'll just pull this over here to the side a little bit and you'll find your guidelines under view at the bottom down here and the easiest way to do this if you have specific measurements is to start off with a new guide now the first thing I want to have is a quarter inch outside white border on this so click on new guide and we'll set this in. We'll do the verticals. Those are the ones going up and down like that. The left hand side first and the setting for this is 0.25 which is a quarter of an inch and there we go. Now the other side since the width here is 4 inches this will be 4 inches minus 0.25 which is 3.75. Let's set that one in. New guide vertical 3.75 and let's do our top and that's new guide that's our horizontal and set this in at 0.25 notice that measures from the left and from the top because there's the zero on our rulers if you're not seeing your rulers just go over here to view and click on rulers right there to show your rulers okay we need our bottom one down here and the bottom one happens to be at 5.75 horizontal 5.75 there we go there's our quarter inch outside border we now can do our red outside frame now our red frame has square corners on this corner and this corner and rounded corners on this corner and this corner you can't do that directly so it's a kind of a two-step process to do that let's first change our foreground color I have my color picker here set at only web colors just to limit the number of colors in here make it easy to choose upper right hand corner and there's our bright red let's now go over and choose our shapes and we want to start off with a rectangle right there notice that the color here is red it grabbed that from the foreground color go up to view again and take a look at snap to make sure that snap to guides is selected little check mark on there I can now go over here to the upper left hand corner, drag down to the bottom right hand corner, it's going to snap right to those guidelines, and there's our nice squared cornered rectangle. Okay, come back down to the background. Let's now do another one of these rectangles. I'm going to hide that one. Another rectangle down here. Let's change the shape to rounded rectangle instead of regular rectangle. So it's the rounded corner rectangle right here set the radius at 100 pixels 100 px and that's simply the radius of the curve and then do the exact same thing upper left hand corner here on our guidelines pull that down to the bottom right hand corner it's going to snap on the edges and there we go there's our rounded cornered 
set. Now both of these are shapes and we want to have these actually as just graphic layers and not shapes at this point. So where it says shape, right click and simplify. Go up to the square corners here. Let's just reshow that. Right click and simplify. Okay, now to show the rounded corners, all I need to do is erase the corner on the square corners. I need to erase that corner and it's going to show the rounded corners underneath. This obviously is why I changed this over to a simplified layer so that I can use the erasing tool. Here's our eraser tool. I have mine set at a hard brush, 125 pixels. It's about that size. And just erase the corner like that and come down bottom left hand corner, erase that corner. There we go. There's our square corner and our rounded corner. Now I need to combine these two layers together. So go back to the move tool, just as a kind of a habit of mine, always choosing the move tool. Click on your first layer, hold the control key down or command key, click on your second layer so they're both selected. Right click over here where the name is and then merge layers. Makes it one layer and there we go. There's our shape with those rounded corners on the one diagonal and these square corners on the other diagonal. Okay, now I want to do just a little thin line, thin outline around this shape. So let's go up to the layer and layer style, style settings. There we go. Now we want to have a stroke. The default color is black as you can see right there. Set that for outside, that's fine. And then just change the size to a five and choose okay. If I now click on the background, you can see that outline in there. Okay, that's the first layer. That's our first shape that's taken care of. Now we need to have some new guidelines in here. For our next shape, we're doing the same kind of shape moved in a little bit, so it means new guidelines. Go back up to View and New Guide, and I'll just walk you through all of these. The first one is a new top guideline, so it's horizontal. This is at a half inch, so do a 0.5. And there we go. Let's now do the next one. View, new guide. This is our bottom horizontal. And the bottom one you want to have at 5, which is right there. It's up quite a bit, as you can see. We now need the left and the right sides. We're moving these in an eighth of an inch from either side. So that is new guide, change to vertical, and our left side one is at 0.375, which is 0.25 plus an eighth, which is 0.125, so it's 0.375, brings it in just a little bit like that. And on the right hand side one, view, new guide, and the size for this one is 3.625. There we are. So. It's a little wider on top, thinner on left and right hand side, and a lot wider on the bottom side. The name stuff is going to be going down here. Our baseball goes right in here. Our player's position goes up here. And then these are just the little outside red areas. Okay, so far so good. That takes care of our first shape. We have our guidelines in for our second shape. Now the second shape is built from our first shape. So grab your first shape, drag it up to the new layer button like that. There we go. We can get rid of the style on this and just click on stroke and choose OK. So we don't have that black line on that one. We now need to resize this side, this shape down a little bit. And this just grab those little control handles. But to see this easily, I'm going to change the color on here first. We'll change it back again a little bit. So let's reverse our colors to black. Go up here to the paint bucket. Make sure you're on paint and not pattern. So you're on paint. Click inside, just make the whole thing black. We'll be actually putting the kid's picture inside of this and that's going to hide that black part of it. Now you can kind of see the control handles in there. Grab the top one and pull that down to that line. Grab the bottom one, pull that up to that guideline. And same thing for the left and the right side. We're just pulling that in to 
pull that shape in just a little bit and choose OK. That's our basic inside shape. Now for the blue line in here, the blue line is made from a stroke and to keep these sharp corners on that, we need to put the stroke inside and not outside. Double click on the FX right there, brings up the style settings or you can just go to layer and layer style brings the same thing up. Let's go back to our stroke and in here we need to change the stroke from outside to inside, change the size up to 40 pixels and then change our color to our blue. Notice I'm still on our web safe colors here, web only colors. Now if you count up our blues, here's the first blue right there right above the greens. Here's our second blue. Click on the second blue and it's upper right hand corner right there. So that's 00CCFF if you wanted to just type that into this little dialog right there. So here's our blue and there it is at the 40 pixels. Choose OK. Now I need to be able to select out just the black part of this with the magic wand. So I'll make that easy. I'll take this and drag this up here to the new layer button. We'll hide that layer. That way I can always go back to this later and change the color if I want to and then just redo the steps after that point. So I'm saving this as a safety. Up here, right click and simplify layer. And there we go. So this now is simplify, which means that this is just a graphic with a light blue line around it. If I go to the magic wand, click in the black area, it then selects just the black area and that's perfect. Okay, let's just go ahead and deselect that. And now bring up the picture of the kid to bring our kid into this image here. And there we go. Now I have a link for this on the video support page. And the link for that, of course, is in the description for this video. So if you don't have a picture, you can go ahead and go over to that video support page and get the picture from there. All right, let's take this and just drag the background layer onto our other file. Now if you're if you don't have these floating windows, and let me just show you this real quick. I know that Photoshop Elements comes by default without floating windows. Let me show you how you set that up. I can close that now. There we go. Go up here to Edit, come down to Preferences and General, right there. Make sure that these two check boxes are selected. Allow floating documents in expert mode, and then enable floating document window docking. Choose OK. If you have that, then you can float your windows around like this. Makes it really easy to work inside of the program. Okay, so we have our kid here on top of everything. Notice he's the top layer, that's where I want him. Let's change the opacity to 50%. We'll just type that in. And that allows me to resize the picture a little bit here. I want him just a little bit larger than and just overlapping into my blue outline a little bit in there. If I open up my window, I can see my con other control handles. There they are. So I'll come down here, hold the, actually just grab the right corner here, and let's pull him out a little bit. And make him so he looks, you know, so he fits nicely. Here's a foot down there. He's looking pretty good. I'm going to pull the right side up just a little bit, a little larger. There we go. So he fits now inside of that very nicely. Choose OK. Let's now reset this back up to 100. Just pull it to the right-hand side, back to 100%. All right, now I don't want to have him overlapping like this, obviously, so we need to go back and grab the black inner shape like I just demonstrated. Click on the magic wand, come down to this shape layer, click inside. Notice I can click right through that one. Even though I'm seeing this layer, I'm working on this layer. If you're confused about that, all you have to do, oh, didn't want to do that, there we go. All you need to do is just deselect, just hide that layer, come down here so it's easy to see, click in the black area and then re-show that layer again. Let's go back up to this layer so I'm on the kid picture layer and I have the selection of the black center from this layer and then just click on the button here for add layer mask and it does that puts the kid inside of that layer mask. That now allows me to move the picture around, move the kid around. If you uncheck this, there's a little, little link things in there, uncheck that. I can then grab the kid's picture and move things around a little bit in here. 
uh, on the wrong side. Double click over here. There we go. Make sure you see the light blue outline around the picture side and not the mask side. So I can now move the picture of the kid around and get him exactly where I want him. I'll put him a little bit to the left hand side there. Okay, so that's taken care of. All we need now is our text in here and our baseball and we're just about set. Let's now bring our baseball graphic in here and that's down on graphics. There you go, click on the graphics tab and change this over here to graphics. If you're not seeing the graphics tab down here, you can find that on the window menu graphics right there. Okay, at the very, very top of our list, here we are, there's a baseball. Just double click on that and that brings that baseball in. Let's go back to our layers again. And there's the baseball sitting on top. Here it is. Let's put it right down there. Now I don't want it exactly vertical, so I'm just going to come just outside the corner here. You can see right there, just outside the corner. Little double arrow. I'm going to pull it around just a bit so it's at an angle. It just looks a little bit more interesting that way if it's slightly angled. Let's put a slight drop shadow on this layer up here. So layer, layer style, style settings, drop shadow. Leave all the stuff the same except for distance. Let's set the distance at 17. There we go. Just a little drop shadow on there. Okay, so far so good. Now, let's put in our yellow swoop shape in here to put our text on. Now for the swoop shape, again, this has to be positioned exactly right for this thing to work. So we need two new guides. Back up to our view menu, new guide. The first one is a vertical guide. Make sure that's selected and set this at 1.75. That's the left side of our swoop right there. And then another new guide, view, new guide. This is a horizontal guide. And this one is going to be at 4.35. There it is, that's the top. So we'll use the bottom down here and this right side, left side. So there is the space we're putting our swoop into, right in there. Okay, get back over to our graphics. Let's now shift this over to shapes. And if I scroll down on the shapes, I'm just using the wheel on my mouse, just scrolling down. And we have one that's called flag in here. It's down a little ways. We'll get down to that one. And there it is right there. It's called flag. Double click, bring that in. Now it comes in at the last color used. We can change our color at this point if we want to. Let's just come back to our layers again. So here's our shape, there's our layers. I'll change the colors here to yellow and we'll go for a real bright yellow. That looks pretty good. And paint bucket, click inside, just make that yellow. Now I take this and drop it right into the corner there on the side, kind of, kind of snaps into that top corner. Pull the right side over, clear to the right side corner, right there. And then pull the bottom down so it snaps on that bottom. There we are. So I'm just snapping onto those guidelines and choose OK. Again, if it's not snapping for you, you'll kind of feel that snap. Let me just show you that if I pull it away, as I get real close to that line, it's just going to kind of pop to the line. There it is. If you're not feeling that little snap in there, go up to View. And again, make sure that Snap to is on and snap to guides. It should already be there because we set that up previously. So there's our swoop. Let's put a drop shadow on this flag shape again and we'll do a little outline as well. Now for the drop shadow, I want the same drop shadow as I have on that baseball. So let's go to the baseball layer right here. Right click, copy layer style. Go up to our shape two, right click, and paste layer style, and that copies that drop shadow, so you have the exact same drop shadow. I also want to have a little thin black outline around this. It just adds to the baseball card-ishness of this. So double click where it says FX, brings back up your style settings, and that's going to be a stroke. And I want to have the stroke on this one inside. 
there we are and we'll set this at five pixels and choose OK. That takes care of our swoop. That also finishes off all of our need for these guidelines. We're done with our guidelines at this point. So we can now hide the guidelines, go up to view and just uncheck guides and they're all hidden. They're still there but they're just hidden. So everything's here now except for the text. Let's do the top text right there first. I'll reset my colors to black and white. Make sure we're on black, just kind of double checking that. Go over here to the type tool and I'll move the kit over just a bit. There we go. So we have two bits of type. The top bit of type here is the position. In this case, I'm just sending it an outfield. And the bottom type down here is the name or nickname of the player. So for our top type, our team position, let's set our colors here to white. Of course, it's just the background, or I could have just inverted those. We set that to white. I have mine set for aerial bold, but you know, whatever type you want to use, type base you want to use is fine. I just have my set a basic aerial bold in here. And then set the point size to 18. And take the type tool, click up here someplace. And I'll just type in outfield. And then use my arrow keys on the keyboard to position that nicely. There it goes. There's the position. Whatever, whatever position your kid plays, just put that position up there. All right, now go back to the Shape 2 layer, and we'll be doing the name or nickname in here. And if I use the Type tool, it's going to be going on the layer above whatever layer we're on. So make sure that you're on the flag layer. Let me just rename this here to match the name of that shape. There's our flag layer. Reset our colors again to black. So black is foreground. That looks good. Back to the Type tool. It grabs the foreground colors you can see down here. Change the point size to 24 so it's a larger typeface. Everything else stays the same. And I don't want it doing inside of my shape. So I'm going to put a new layer here like that. And then just click. So it puts the type on that layer. Converts that layer, that new layer, to a type layer. Now let's put in Mighty Mickey in here. Now notice that it's not a very good fit yet. So we need to fit this and put our swoop in. I'm going to take my floating window here and just move it back up to the top. You see that kind of changes, kind of goes transparent when it's in position. Look what that position it then docks that window. So now I docked window. I can now scroll down and we can see all of our type tools down below here. Let's just Make sure it's selected, just triple click. Make sure it's selected. And click on this button here. That brings up the type warp. And there's one down here called flag. Click on that, and it's a flag shape. Notice that's the wrong direction. So we'll go over here on where it says bend, and just pull this to the left slowly like this, and it will bend to the correct shape. Now it's not going to be exact, so we'll get it you know, pretty close choose OK. Back to our move tool. Now grab the left side and the right side and stretch the type out so it fits into our box area like that. You can move it around a little bit. Maybe use the cursor keys to, to nudge it around. And choose OK. Now if the type isn't exactly right on the bend still, go back to the type tool and bring the type warp back up again and you can adjust the bend here a little bit to get just the right amount of bend. That looks pretty good. And choose OK. There we go. There's our wavy nickname in here. And at that point we have finished our baseball card. Okay, let me just pull that off and re-float my window. So you can see the whole thing. And there we go. There's the baseball card all finished. Now I mentioned before that if you want to, you can 
change these colors to match the team colors. Let me just demonstrate that quickly in here. That's a couple of steps to do that. First is our background. Let's say our, our team colors are the green in here and the blue up here. So before I even do that, I'm going to do one more thing here, one more step. The picture is kind of dark on this. Let's just go ahead and put an adjustment layer on there and improve our picture a little bit. So I'm on the kid layer. I'm on the kid's side. Notice the light blue outline right there. Go up to layer, new adjustment layer, and let's go to levels where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask. Check that. Choose OK. And in here I can now take my middle control, move it to the left, and I can lighten my picture up a little bit. Move the left side to the right just a little bit and increase contrast a touch. Right side to the left a little bit and brighten it up so the outsides, pulling those in, this increases the contrast of the white side, this increases the contrast of the black side, and then your middle gray value either lightens or darkens the picture. So just use these controls to get a nice adjustment on the picture. That looks pretty good for this particular picture. I'll close that box. There we go. Now the reason I did the clipping mask on this is so that the, this effect, this control only affects just the photograph and nothing else. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's now go back to our red layer. I'm going to make a copy of this layer. Let's drag it up here and make a copy like that. I'll hide my original so I can always go back to that if I want to. It's always a good idea to, if you're doing experimenting or playing around, make copies of your layers. If you have a lot of layers, it doesn't matter. You can always show or hide your layers, and that helps give you flexibility. Okay, I'm on the top layer here, and I want to match this layer to the green. So I want to have a mid-tone green, which is in here someplace. Click on the color picker. If this is open, notice I have a little eyedropper. See right there, right hand corner, a little eyedropper. Come here and pick one of the mid-tone values. Don't go for a shadow. Don't go for a highlight. Pick something in the middle. So there we go. That's actually pretty close. I'll uncheck web only colors. And let's try that again. That's pretty good. Maybe a little lighter. That looks nice right in there. You can, you know, tweak the color a little bit if you want to in here. I'll go a little bit greener on that. Choose OK. There's my green color. I can now use my paint bucket click into the red and that colorizes that with that color. Again, if you have a better color swatch, you can match that exactly if you want to, but that's just an easy way to do it. Now, for the outline up here, this is why I said to save this. Now, two ways of doing this. One way is to just use the eyedropper tool and click right into the light blue outline here and do it that way. I think you have a little less control that way. So we're going to hide that layer, bring this layer back up again. This is our unsaved layer. Click on the FX, bring that up. Here's our color swatch right there. Click on that. Here's our color picker again. And once again, I can come in here and I can actually grab a bit of color right from the picture. And because in the blue arrangement, we'll go a little bit bluer on that, so it looks good. Choose OK. And there we go. I've now matched the colors in here to the colors of the uniform. So you can easily match your colors to your team colors if you want to with that trick. I'm going to go back to my default colors. I just kind of happen to like those better. So there's my default colors. They're just a bit brighter. So here we are. You know, some baseball cards will match the team colors. Some cards won't match the team colors. It's up to you if you want to match those or not. But there it is. There is how to do a little mini poster in the style of a baseball card for your little leaguer. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this 